Hello, family, and thank you for coming by tonight. You know it was Real Housewives of Atlanta tonight, Eastern Standard Time Zone, 8 a.m., and we're going to get right on into it because all of it was a total fuckery foolishness with a fake show. Very fraudulent and shitty tonight. Okay, I'm just keeping it real. I'm like, we need another whole cast. I am tired of Kenya and Kenya's ways and Kenya trying to portray <laughs> other people's bad behavior and demeanor and put salt on their names. But then when it comes to her, she tries to always smell like a rose. As you can see, it's not going to be be Kenya's night not on this channel not in my mind and I'm ready to get rid of her we need another whole cast okay that's all I'm gonna say if we can get rid of Kenya Cynthia uh Candy oh we can see Nene here and there we just need another whole crew because I'm sick of these women okay but we got the Real Housewives of Atlanta being shown season 12 episode 17 Grease is the word but before I get on into it I'm going to say some hellos and some thank yous uh, for people coming out visiting the channel sitting down relaxing kicking off their shoes you know I uh, want to start some light banter okay in the comment section again um, PM Patricia Kaysen, Kenya loves the spotlight. You're right. She doesn't know when to shut up. Okay. And as we've seen on today's episode or tonight's episode, she's still trying to defame Mark's character out there in the social media realm. See, now I understand very clearly when they did announce that they were getting a divorce or separating on both parties. I remember he was saying something about he would seek litigation on individuals that wanted to defame his character, his name. I'm pretty sure he was talking about Kenya Moore and anything that she can get in and spread lies and untruths on him. He will see her uh, in court and they will be litigating towards each other. So I'm like, go ahead, do what you got to do, Mark, because this woman I him, she is sabotaging your name, killing your name throwing salt on your name and we don't even know any of this to be true but they, this episode i was like i too fit to be tired with kenya and i'm too through with her okay then i want to say uh hey to maria Perry. Nope, Nene is not a good example of talking about how others should do in their marriage hell but i'm hey who is on the show tanya she got a fiance we can only go by what they give us, but I'm not going to say they're good people to be talking about marriage. We know Nene, she divorced Greg, she got back with Greg, she had other you know, people in her life at the time when they were separated, this is what it is, she ain't a good fit. Damn sure no Porsche ain't no good fit or trying to get anybody any marital advice. We ain't even looking to look at Candy Burrs and her dungeon things and how she gets down and invite people in their bedrooms and do threesomes and this, that, and the third. But again, we don't even want to go there with Nene trying to give too much advice on anything when it talks about marriage, okay? I'm just saying. Ain't nobody in this Housewives franchise of the Real Housewives of Atlanta can really say anything about giving anybody no advice. All they ain't can say, hey, if you going to stay, stay if you ain't, okay. Just make sure that prenup is in you know intact in okay well you won't lose as much as you think you need to lose okay so that's all i'm gonna say about that marisol white honey yes i'm getting better still a little sore around my uh rib areas but i'm coming along strong and with continued prayers from you and the rest of the family i'm sure i'll be back on top feeling my best my bones be done mended and we'll still be doing it on thing. Okay, Anna Banana, I'm glad to see you in there. Thank you for coming out and speaking amongst the family. Remember, you are truly loved, whether we see you or not. But I just have to keep your name in existence and keep speaking truth and, and prosperity over you. And one day, um, you'll be feeling a lot more better and uh, a lot more self-assured. Okay, love you, baby, to the core. Then we got Rexy H., um, I tell you, you wouldn't watch just one taping of her show just to see. Hell, I would just see just one taping of Nene if she got a show. Just try it out. She might make you laugh, Kiki, whatever. But at least give her a shot, okay? Just for being a woman. Um, then we got Lady G. I love Greg, too. However, unless a man comes for Nene, Greg needs to sit down and not have an opinion on women's affairs. I, I strongly agree in that. Women are just too catty. When we start bringing everybody and their grandmama in a situation, it just constantly gets, you know, 
more chaotic than necessarily it had to be so now men need to stay out of women's conversations when it's dealing with strictly women men just don't need to see their way in no shape form or fashion okay then we got grown folks relationships i agree a little bit with you but these women knew what they were getting into when they joined the show however it's our fault for supporting the bullshit and i have to include myself into it you know we're gonna look at the re- these reality shows we get on them or how they portraying themselves we got to get on ourselves too because we stupid for looking at the shit they giving us to look at trying to make money off of it so we're all in the same boat okay then rochelle jones thank you for stopping by if they get nene off the tv they would just replace her with someone else just as bad or even worse okay so i'm like i'm kind of torn you know tonight i'm just fed up with can y'all i really don't want her on the show no more she's just doing too much too much too much and then she's gonna try to side with thanking everybody except for nene at the little table that was just piss poor poor judgment on her behalf and that shows me she ain't growing she's not growing on this show so why do we need kenya other than giving us uh banter bad banter bad negativity here we can hire somebody else we can replace nene as well and get just some old fresh faces in here and do the same damn job okay because we didn't know who they was until we kept watching them each week uh they showed the episode or a new episode a new season that's how we got to like them we can get we can get to liking somebody else we can we can get to liking somebody else they just need to clean house and let let have <laughs> miss hollywood hey girl these ladies on the show have no business to themselves while being featured on the type of platform so if they gonna get out there and and, and scratch their ass tickle their feet and all this and we watch it then we all gonna have an opinion on it that's just how life goes you put your shit out there on front street you don't think nobody gonna say nothing trust and believe somebody gonna say something and that one person is me okay uh angela holmes thank you for coming up by thanks for speaking your truth gracie taylor uh explain a little bit more what you were talking about in your comment section elaborate a little bit more on your statement about transgender b uh i'm i'm i'm, I'm kind of figuring i know where you're going with it but then i'm not quite sure only if you want to okay now let's get on into this real housewives of atlanta foolery tom foolery tonight okay we have a setting or a plot stage where cynthia and candy they out talking outside of Kenya house because evidently Kenya don't call them over there. Some things have been going on transpiring from the night before with her and Ma. Da 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 da. It was pretty much a fake fraudulent scene. It seemed like it was staged. I'm like, damn, y'all say reality TV, but y'all embellishing and giving me more scripted shit than anything else. Then we got Cynthia calling herself in her apparel. She got an Illuminati pocketbook, honey, with the all seeing eye on it in the triangle. I said, y'all don't really wake up and see who these people really get down and who they really serve and pay homage to. Ooh, I don't know what to say from uh, my family. But my family's smart. They be watching. They be watching. They be watching, honey. Watch, listen, and learn. Since it's all tied up with them and she done sold herself a long time ago. So if you don't believe it, keep investigating. Do your own research, okay? Then we got Kenya crying and trying to talk to them, the ladies about uh what had transpired the night before she's really making mark look like this mean evil spirited type man a man that's probably been beating on her as well as verbally abusing her and this that and the third she said it was just horrible last night and candy and cynthia trying to get wrap their minds around or what she's really trying to say so they're trying to throw in their own two cents and she said you know mar just went crazy he just went wild that's that in the third and then he got up you know, I'm seeing this information and my publicist is calling me and telling me, you know, we need to respond to this. What we going to say? So she had to double back and counteract what he was saying. I'm like, nah, you ain't had to double back. Shit wasn't true. Shit wasn't true. If you didn't feel like you wanted to get no statement at a time, you didn't have to give a statement. Just because he made his play or whatever, this is what it is. Not your, your, your uh, tune to be throwing whatever you want to throw out there just arbitrarily just saying shit okay so now you should have did a little bit more you call yourself miss usa or miss america whoever but you ain't acting like it in no shape form or fashion you just act like you ain't got nothing going on kenya on how to present yourself and how to do yourself when it comes to these pr stunts and pr press conferences and stuff you got like you oh girl you got on my nerve but anyway moving from that 
um you was trying to tell us y'all had an uber driver to bring y'all home from the uh function of the black lab experience charity event what happened to your cars honey you got cars you got a nice ride what do you mean you catching an uber and then um the Uber driver and you are feeling some kind of way about Marks and his demeanors. And y'all had to ask Mark to get out the Uber driver car because he's been a little bit too um, domesticated and wanting to put hands on you, I guess, or threatening to put hands on you. you giving us all this bad banter on Mark. But, you know, prior to this event, he was the love of your life. He was, the you know, the one man that you really wanted to get married to and have a family. And this, that, and third. Now you're just throwing all this defamation of character on this man um back or, or showing another whole side like a Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type situation what the hell is going on can you what is going on do you not know you can uh, damage this man in the same tone are you trying to say you still love him want to be with him but then you call him everything but the child of God out there in them streets girl Woo, child you doing too much but you talking the Uber driver had to put him out of the Uber ride. But he, because he was coming for your throat, literally. I'm like, really? Why you want at the police station, honey? Because that's where I would have went. I would have got him out that Uber car. And I would have went on into uh, the police station, the nearest one, where the infraction happened. And I would have told him, go arrest him. He, he violated me. He assaulted me. Give us some facts, can you? Don't give us speculations and in the windows. Give us facts, baby, because that's what I'm dealing with. Other than that you're talking a lot of trash and I'm, I'm sick of you okay and i don't believe a word you're saying you're just trying to play it up to have your way out of this situation when you know it was going in fraudulently and it was a contractual agreement so i'm like don't don't make him look like matt if he's not really a matt out there you know what i'm saying because you really did bad by matt jordan okay now you're trying to do this shit on mark daily it's too much it's too much can you uh, where there's smoke, you always there, and the show gonna be a hell of a fire when um the uh, paramedics as well as the fire department coming out to try to put the fire out. It's be a total inferno when you finish with stuff, a uh, mass destruction. Okay. Then we got Cynthia. Cynthia asked Kenya, do you want to still be married to Mark or do you want a divorce? Then Kenya told me she don't know. She don't want a divorce. But you just told us that the man violently uh, tried to attack you. Then he sat up there verbally abusing you. And then you scared him because he was coming for your throat. I mean, come on, girl. It don't make sense what you are giving out. We move on to the next scene. We got Kenya tell Cynthia and Cannon, Mark uh, having sex with another woman. You caught some messages on his text but i mean damn we don't went from him being an abuser uh to a non-loving wife be abusing you verbally and mentally and physically and then you know, turn around and saying he, he cheating on you too girl you got too many scenarios in this one big pot of soup that it ain't adding up it's just feel like a pot of feces you trying to give us and for us to appetize ourselves or use it as an appetizer for us to swallow and i'm like no take that shit and throw it away all this shit is just make believe you're just giving us total lies and fictitious type of statements here Oh, the foolery on you is just, you looking like a buffoon out here, Kenya. A total buffoon. And just too much is going on. Too many scenarios are being spread. And none of them are accurately making sense. Not logical. Not reasoning. Not even when we deduct it and try to form a hypothesis. Is it making any kind of sense here? Girl. Woo! But you go on and tell the ladies that, oh, he's sitting up there having an affair with somebody. And I had to tell her, I called her and, and told her who I was and that she better stop seeing you because you know where she lives. Well, can you, you don't sit up there and say it on live TV. You don't threaten somebody's life. Okay? So what does that make you, girl? She need to be down there fill, fill in, filling out a police report on what you just told her that you're going to come and see her and check her about fooling around with her husband, Mardale, okay? Then we got Kenna talking about sex, her man, another woman. Yeah, it's bad, but is it divorce bad? I'm like, girl, divorce ain't been in a situation once you said cheating. A woman has got him where she can give me concrete evidence. Forget that. Ain't no divorce. We going straight on. Where my prenup? Let's get rid of this jigger. Because I'm tired of him and I don't want to be bothered. That's how that would have been broke down. But we know Candy. Tired out there having threesomes, foursomes, fifthsomes. And you still going to take them. So that, why are we even talking to you? Okay. Then we got Candy calls herself to break down crying. Candy and Cynthia um, 
confronts her and comforts her and all this uh that ah this is a bunch of shit really what it was a bunch of shit and i want to throw up on tv on, on both of them and say y'all ain't giving me nothing clean your own cells up because this is full of shit y'all giving me okay um then we got cynthia trying to talk about uh, staying with someone and like girl you couldn't stay with peter look how peter did you peter peter punk and eat okay had a wife and couldn't keep none of them not even you then you talking about mike look how mike he already telling you he done cheated in the past he's not a good man he wasn't a good man and i'm we really trying to look like it's a good man at this day to this current day we are in now so no you don't need to be talking listening showing any kind of empathy because you need something for yourself while you're throwing it out at her you need something for yourself cynthia so take note this might be you uh several uh, months uh in the future pretty much i just want cynthia to shut the fuck up really i just want her to shut the fuck up okay because she don't know what she talking about candy don't know what she talking about and we damn know king don't know what she talking about all right anyway we got the girls all meeting all up at the airport trying to go on this grease trip Cynthia shows up for first, then Porsche shows up, then Nene, Marlo, then Candy come in the wing, left wing somewhere, okay? Porsche is bringing her mom and PJ on the trip. She's leaving Dennis at home where Dennis should be left at home. Uh, and then we got this situation where uh, Candy trying to tell the ladies, uh, can we chill on Kenya? Can we not ask her too much about what's going on? I know y'all been seeing it in social media. You're trying to break the ice and the other stuff. Then it's like, hell, hell no. That shit she did to tell you. No, it's all like popcorn. We're going to get her. We are going to get her. And then Candy going to be rolling her eyes just that third. I said, Candy, you shouldn't even open up your damn mouth in the first place. Okay? It has shit to do with you. Uh, you you starting stuff already. Trying to play the mediator when you need to be there in the first place. Okay? Didn't need to be there in the first place talking shit on shit anyway. Okay? Then we got um, Kenya. She finally shows up. After all the ladies done made it to Greece, she, I guess she just rolled up like that. She didn't want to take the trip with them. And, of course, it would have been a nice trip because, uh, what's her name? Uh, Marlo had some great goose up in there. I'm like, ooh, she had the big-ass bottle, too. She know she was going to get lit. And um, Portia right there with her hidden seat flask or whatever. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a nice time, a very nice time, a very good and nice time. Okay? But, anyway, they finally get to Greece and uh, Kenya and all her disappearing tricks and, and, and antics she throws out she shows up now she's supposed to be so heartbroken so torn down this that and third but she gonna show up for the grease trip i'm like hey shamia could have took your place you don't have to show up and show out no ma'am no ma'am we didn't need you to do none of that we needed you to stay at home and fix your problems you seem to be having okay but anyway she sashays her behind on up there you know um uh, Acting like ain't nothing happened, this, that, and third, and trying to, you know, talk to Ken, and Ken looking like, well, damn, you should have gave me heads up, no, because see, that's, Ken, that's how Ken, Ken flows. If you don't catch up, you don't know her M.O. by now, Ken, you just waiting to be on her next hit list, and I don't care if she mows you down like a dog, okay, because you asked for it. You acting like you see her, but you acting like you really don't see her, but she see you, and she's going to get over you before it is more said than done more sooner rather than later okay but we all tried to warn you we all tried to tell you but you think you got king in your back pocket okay we'll see king's pulling those purse strings we'll see we'll see we will see okay but anyway uh the women all get there uh, they all shot to see Kenya, but it is what it is. You know, Kenya always try to pull a rabbit out the hat. I always try to set the tone, the stage scene, and she's going to be starring and, and, and pretty much prevailing because she wrote her own uh, plot in this scenario. Okay? So, I don't understand the whole deal about going on a trip with these women and why not everybody just can't have nice rooms like Tanya had put them up in Toronto, Canada. Why Why we got to always compete? These are not children. These are grown-ass, solidified women in their own rights, okay? Why do we have to compete for rooms? And I say that that's fake, fraudulent, and foolish fuckery shit that I'm talking about that can and continue always love to partake in, okay? But anyway, y'all saw the scenes. We ain't even going to go to it. It just is what it is. Okay, and at this point, I'm asking Cynthia to shut up. Okay, I'm tired of hearing her this whole episode. I would have taken Cynthia's room if I was Portia and just let it be done. Because she talking about she want to have some phone sex with Mike and this, that, and the third. I'm like, oh, my God, Cynthia. Where did you come from, child? You, everybody talking about you aging backwards. But you, you might in your beauty, but you aging backwards in your mind as well. I'm like, girl, I can't take it. You just too much, too. 
We go into another scene. We got Cynthia comes in and talks with Nene about marriage and all this, that, and the third, and uh, how it would be nice for her and Kenya to kind of talk with one another about, you know, the different phases a marriage can go through, the breakup, the reback. Uh, reclaiming the marriage, this, that, and third. She was asking, you know, Nene to throw another olive branch at Kenya and try to help her out. Nene's like, okay, I don't know where I'm going to get it from, girl. You know, she would like shade her and this, that, and third. But she said, okay, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do, okay? So we you thought it was going to be a good little kiki a moment for them as well as a good moment for her and Kenya. But as we can tell, Twirl has been like a tornado out there and just throwing shit and putting oh just getting on my goddamn nerves tonight you see why i'm cussing y'all because can you really got under my skin she got on my nerves i'm like why do we have her on the show why do we have her on the show she want to be her one um uh, woman show where everything just formulates around her everything makes her look good she's the you know HBIC, everybody just bows down to her. I'm like, in what world would this really go over well? What world, honey? And then she's going to try to get Tanya to be okay with her again. Like, Tanya, don't let her fool you. I, I put you as a smart woman, so uh, Tanya be watching her, honey. Watch her, watch her, watch her, and play the game with her. Because Kenya's playing nothing but a, a malicious, manipulative type of game. And she thinks she's not going to ever lose. But hey, We'll keep watching. We'll keep forging ahead and see what comes up. But she don't want to try that Marlo. She will not try that Marlo. Okay. That's who she need to be watching too. Her Marlo would size her up from the flow up. Okay. From the head down to the flow. Okay. And then go all the way back up and show her the door. All right. But anyway. We go on. Uh, we've got the latest. They're waiting for Kenya to come out and have dinner. Kenya's checking on her daughter because she don't put a nanny up in a villa somewhere close to them with the baby. Just then the third. And she's checking on them. She finally comes down, you know, looking all tired and through and delayed and all anything you want to say. Just having a little uh, chip on her shoulder or whatnot. Then Nene asks Kenya about her dogs. Can you act like she ain't heard Nene? I'm like, damn, the room was quiet as a pen. You can help pen drop when Nene asked you that shit. You already starting shit, can you? See, that's what I'm saying. Damn, you, Nene should have just thrown a whole damn tree at you. Forget the olive branch. Throw a fucking tree at Kenya. That's how I would have been. You know what I'm saying? That, excuse me and good night. I got to go have a drink. Can you bring that great goose with you, Marlo? <laughs> that's what I would have did. But Nene, you know, she let that go. She sure did. She let it go. Uh, can you finally, you know, because it was an awkward situation. It's like, okay, why you ain't sending a Nene? Nene did none of you. Why are you acting an ass, girl? So she went on and said, yes, yes, she still have both of them and whatever. Then Cynthia Cannon, you know, she was trying to thank, uh, Kenya was trying to thank Cynthia Cannon for being her riders, her diehard friends for being there for her. I said, no, those are your minions at the time, Kenya. You're trying to speculate where you want to put them in the future, but they're your minions. They're playing your game at this point, okay? Um, then she thanks everybody in the room except for Nene. That's the second snoop, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I see what she's doing now. Uh, spit on her Nene, please spit on her. Just spit on her Nene, cause she asking for it. She asking for it. Okay, it ain't right. And I told y'all it ain't right. We don't want bodily fluids on us. This that, this that and the other. But you know, Kenya was asking for it. She was asking for it tonight. She was asking for it tonight. And I could see the build up of the frustration Nene was in. I'm like, she didn't have to be told to be nice to this lady, but Cynthia came to her. You know, like, check your friend. I'm only trying to help, not hinder. But, you know, she don't want it. You know, she don't want none of this, okay? But I can see why Nene really had, you know, was at her last ropes. Because she got tired of people coming to her trying to mend a fence or trying to give some advice to Kenya and be nice to Kenya. And Kenya's still throwing salt in a wound, okay? That's definitely still open. They both ain't forgiving each other for a lot of different things. But it's like, damn, let's be cordial here. But again, Kenya showing her ass. And then she got shit on her in them streets. And then she talking about Ma, her so-called loving husband, in a, a negative and de derogatory type way. I'm like, this is too much. Just too much I can see. I'm like, girl, get the spit and spit on her, okay? Okay. But anyway, uh, we move on from that situation. We go to the last and final scene. We got Kenya talking about uh, let's have a hot girl summer. Let's enjoy each other. Let's enjoy the trip. Um, you know, she thanking everybody besides Nene. She done stumped Nene two times. And, you know, even Candy, 
in her own right, she did try to say, you know, can you go out there and, and, and straighten out that situation with Nene? Because Nene was coming from a good place. You didn't have to go in. I know you're going through a lot, baby, but you didn't have to go do that. And she called herself going to go do the right thing. Goddamn, Kenya went out there and did the opposite of what she should have been doing. And Candy going to come up there and try to take over Kenya again instead of going back to where Kenya was, cussing her ass out and then leaving and go to bed or whatever. But now Candy was over there trying to talk to Nene when it wasn't even a situation for her to even talk to Nene about it. You had already told Kenya what to do. You had instructed her how to do it. And Kenya still went and did what she wanted to do. And y'all talking about y'all can control tornado out there. Hell no. Somebody need to spit on shoulders. Spit on Kenya ass more. Okay. But that's all I got, y'all. Y'all can sell them all in my feelings and everything. It's just her kids. You know, she's just too much. She is too much. She don't want to be treated like a human being. So why even treat like Kenya like a human being? That's all I got to say. But my fam, y'all get down in them comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought. What did y'all see in him? Did I miss something? Or am I right to feel the way I feel? Even though I know I'm right to feel the way I feel because it's my feelings. Hell, I don't tell y'all how to feel. So I want y'all really to tell me how to feel. But if I was out, if I was out and about and I lost my mind and I should have been called out, then call me out. Okay, call me out, but I'm, I'm in my feelings with this episode. I'm like, oh, we need to cast another, we, we need to get another whole cast. Because we definitely need to get a sense here. Uh, Candy and Kenya. I, I'm sorry. I'm questionable about Nene because you know Nene plays her part to a certain degree. She ain't all that. I know it. Okay, but I'm like, I'm, I'm sick of Kenya. I'm sick. I'm like, why do we bring her back? Damn, why do we bring her? Phaedra. That's what we need. Phaedra. But hell, I even take Sheree at this time. Kenya was over yet, but uh, uh-uh, I, I can't, I can't deal with Kenya. I can't, I cannot deal with Kenya from this point on. So if anybody is a really true Kenya lover, lover y'all not gonna let me have my pieces. Time for y'all to leave. <laughs> Because I'm telling you, Kenya's going to be like somebody I get on every last episode. I don't have no empathy for her no more. I have no no sympathy. I have nothing for Kenya, okay? Now, this Kenya can show me some uh, firm, good stance of her trying to be accountable for her actions and, and stop trying to play the blame game and just that third. Then other than that, it's just going to be, uh, I'm, I'm real, oh, uh, I'm just going to roll over her every time I get a chance, okay? But that's all I had, fam. Hope y'all enjoy yourselves. Get into interacting down in the comments. Uh, and that's about it. Okay, that is really about it. Have a great week, and I will see y'all next video. Thank you, and and love you all to the core. I'm just in my feelings right now, okay? All right, thank you. Good night.